Welcome everyone to a video lecture on Dasein's Ecstatic Temporality Zeitlichkeit in Being and Time. I'll be reading from my book on Heidegger, Heidegger on Death and Being, published in 2021 by Springer. And if you'd like to study Heidegger more intensely, more closely with me, please follow the link down below in the description and you'll find out more about how to do this. So I'm going to read from this chapter and comment on some of the remarks, um, on some of the passages as I go along. Being and time, Sein und Zeit, aims at an understanding of being that is temporal. Since the early Greek insight into being as Présence, as presence, as unwesen in German, and even the Cartesian reduction of being to presence at hand for Handenheit point to time. More precisely, time teams seems to be, and this is a bit too reifying, uh, but it seems to be structuring presence, or it seems to be throwing open uh, presence. What is present is present temporally. Whatever, however, the tradition failed to think time properly and in its own right and instead interpreted time as linear. The ecstatic temporality of Dasein in question is not the time in the ordinary or uh, sense of fleeting or passing time. Instead, ecstatic time arises. How these ecstasies work and how they are united is the question of this lecture. In order to understand Dasein's ecstatic temporality, and as a result of that, in how far time is the horizon of the meaning of being, we must begin with what Heidegger calls the ordinary, or as he puts it, vulgar understanding of time. The ordinary understanding of time is conditional on original ecstatic temporality. In a nutshell, time uh, sorry, the ordinary understanding of time represents time as linear. Ordinary time is the time of passing homogeneous now states. T, you know this from analytical philosophy, I would think. T2, T1, T2, Tx, etc. Is that ordinary time is the time of the they self and its structures, the everyday. The three modes of the inauthentic understanding of time are called Vergangenheit, past, presence, Gegenwart and future Zukunft. As Heidegger notes in the decisive section 65 of Being and Time, these are represented as separate from one another. Nonetheless, Heidegger takes the ordinary modes to be indicative of the unity of Dasein's ecstatic temporality, for they are derivative in the, of the primordial ecstatic unity of temporality. And I say it again that ecstatic time arises and gives instead of passes and leaves and fleets. There's a reason why we think that time fleets, according to Heidegger. Dasein's three proper ecstasies, which the ordinary modes of time are conditional on, are, however, Gewesenheit, having been, Gegenwart, I translate as the waiting towards us, or, or <laughs> let's say is a good presence, and Zukunft, as that which is to come. And these are not separate from us. Other than in the ordinary understanding of time, these ecstasies are separate, uh, are not separate from each other. Instead, they are equiprimordial. And what is even more difficult to comprehend, they are simultaneous. Strictly speaking, these are not even modes that somehow are interrelated. Instead, a rising of that which is to come and returning into that which has been and thereby letting the presence unfold is how time, finite time, temporalizes itself. Dasein's ecstasies are reflected in its relation of being. Sein's Verhältnis with itself insofar as Dasein always already relates to itself out of what it has been and what it projects itself to be. This is a finite process because Dasein is finite and the understanding of being is finite. In the prevalent mode of the they self, as Dasein falls for the world, Dasein forgets its finite ecstasies and makes time a linear and endless flow of arbitrarily available now states. Hence the prevalent talk today of saving time.
time, and the need to be time efficient. As if time, and of course also often the time that's speeding up and accelerating, etc. We would also have to wonder why it is that time, especially in this age, begins to show itself as a phenomenon, more so than it did perhaps in the Middle Ages or the ancient Greek times. Of course, we have to be, uh, this is not an invitation to an ontic comparison between different epochs that would be not philosophical, uh, ontological uh, investigation. But what is striking, nevertheless, is that time seems to be off the essence for us today. As if time, namely, were a present at hand resource, which we can at will operate with. The only thing these expressions reveal is that we are running out of time interestingly, that we have less and less time precisely because we think of time as a scarce resource that continuously passes us by. It is beyond the scope of this, this lecture now, but I'd like to note that uh, Heidegger um, has seen in the workings of time, and we haven't seen this yet, uh, what it is that he means with the axes of time. And I have attempted to, um, so far, to continue this um, project a bit. I've published, uh, last year I published a paper on Ecstatische Zeit and Technische Zeit in Perspektiven der Philosophie in German, um, which goes a bit beyond Heidegger and tries to understand and think through time with um, where we currently are. Ecstatic time cannot be measured. Ecstatic time does not pass. Ecstatic time arises and gives. There is a wellspring of abundant riches in ecstatic time. There is a possibility to exist in accordance with it, precisely because ecstatic time is what structures any presence. Ecstatic time is time in excess of itself, in abundance. Beginning with section 65, Heidegger aims to provide the final argument for why time is supposed to be the horizon of Dasein's proper thematic grasping of being. The analysis of understanding as co-constitutive of, of resoluteness has pointed to the towards structure of Dasein and any primordial understanding of itself, others, and world. There is always a towards structure. Um, Dasein is, is directed towards its almost possibility death, and from this everything else arises. So now Heidegger wants to, as he puts it, lift the analysis, the analytic of Dasein, um, on ontologically sound grounds. That means that Heidegger must now be able to answer ontologically why it is that Dasein is of such a towards structure uh, and direction um, and what enables this directedness towards. As argued above, Heidegger posits death as the utmost limit and ownmost possibility in order to establish Dasein's towards structure. Yet this must now be shown to cohere with Dasein's temporal structure as well. Hence, I now address why the ecstasy of the future has priority, what unifies Dasein's ecstatic temporality, and what role the phenomenon of death plays in this regard. Following Heidegger's remark in Davos, where he says that death is specifically um, posited in being in time, so that uh, the future, that, that, that Dasein's futural directedness is, um, becomes uh, accessible. So, death, I argue, opens Dasein for its radical futurity, and as such, death, in fact, enables Dasein's disclosing of being. The ordinary understanding of time, maintains Heidegger, is not just the time of the they, but also the way in which even philosophy post-Plato and especially post-Aristotle has often interpreted time. Heidegger mentions uh, Augustine, Aristotle and Hegel as examples of vulgar time. Um, Heidegger takes from them the positive insight that the ecstatic temporality of Dasein can only be appreciated in relation to vulgar time, so it doesn't disappear with Heidegger. Um, there will never be a pure uh, existence of um, just uh, ecstatic temporality, just like there is no authenticity without inauthenticity and no disclosure without concealment. So, Hegel's conception of time, Heidegger argues, is, quote, the most radical way in which the vulgar understanding of time has been given 
form conceptually. This is because Hegel's account of time depicts the most sustained formalization and philosophical justification of linear time. Hegel first equates time with space. And this, by the way, Bergson does this as well with the durée. Um, so this allows Hegel to posit now states as points in space. This is the traditional metaphysical way of understanding uh, time, where time is equated with space um, and then made linear in space. The point posits itself as the now and as the point posits itself, it negates itself. For Hegel, time is intuitive becoming. The movement from being to non-being and vice versa for every now is already no longer itself when it posits itself. Becoming is the interplay between Entstehen and Vergehen, generation and corruption in this um, um, Greek, uh, uh, traditional Greek understanding of uh, being, uh, uh, genesis kai phtora, as we know from the Metataphysica 984a in Aristotle, uh, genesis kai phtora, generation and corruption. Hence, for Hegel, quote, the being of time is the now, but there is no being of time for Heidegger. This is the crucial claim. Ne? With the being of time as the now and the being of the now as the point, the Hegelian conception of time formalizes the vulgar understanding as linear time of time. Hegel formalizes and philosophically justifies in a most abstract and redundant way, what everybody always already knows, which is that time is just passing us by. But never cares, does he, good old Hegel, to question whence the assumption comes. The time passes and passes us by. The future passes into the present and the present passes into the past indifferently, so on and so on forever. Whatever is actual will no longer be actual as soon as the next now comes around and what has passed disappears into the past never to return. Hence Hegel's logic um, is timeless, precisely because Hegel's understanding of time is deeply metaphysical. Hegel dissolves everything, so we have to look at these two figures, Hegel and Nietzsche. Hegel completely dissolves time, while Nietzsche dissolves everything into time. So time is already spitting, as it were. For the one, for the first one, for Hegel, at the very edge of what can be said and thought in metaphysical thinking, time just disappears, it's dissolved uh, in the logic, and for Nietzsche, everything, else, everything that is, is dissolved into time, into the becoming of the eternal recurrence of the same. So, for Heidegger, this is the time of the they. So does man, is Hegel's, Hegel's uh, understanding of time is the understanding of das man. If one would be, uh, if one were to be a bit awful, a bit mean with Hegel, one could say it's the most uh, bourgeois understanding of time. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, <laughs> to put it bluntly, as I wrote in my book, Hegel simply formalized the they's understanding of time. The time of the they is only that which is currently present. Thus the they forgets how that which has been and that which is to come are formative, are forming for that which is now. Quote from Heidegger, the vulgar understanding of time sees the fundamental phenomenon of time in the now. And indeed in the sheer now cut off in its complete structure that is called the present." End of quote. In vulgar time, there is a certain indifference at work because the assumed homogeneity of now states. There is also a certain scatteredness about it since every now state is cut off from all the other now states, all the other now points. This finds expression in the idle talk about passing time or time being too long or killing time, etc that has even made it into Hegel's metaphysical system and logic of everything, even though perhaps it's not fair to say that Hegel is a panlogician. Anyways, hence, as Heidegger says in his lecture course on Hegel's phenomenology, which is given after uh, Heidegger wrote Being in Time, um, that in Heidegger does say that the, think, 
the need the need to think being and time arises after Hegel. Yet Heidegger's revolutionary question is this, because Hegel dissolves time. Quote, why, this is from being in time, why do we at all say that time passes away, vergehen, vergehen, when we do not emphasize just as much, just as much. So there is a vergehen, but also just as much uh, how an entstehen. So Heidegger here plays with vergehen and entstehen, uh, he turns it around, right? Entstehen and Vergehen, uh, Genesis, Kaif, Dora, Generation and Corruption. Uh, but he turns it around. It's, it's a first a Vergehen, a passing away, or, and then an arising, Entstehen. So I like to, not, not comes into being, which is the official translation here by Stambaugh, but I prefer perhaps some um, arising. Yeah? So the reason for this, as Heidegger explicitly says, is death. It's death. If you want to understand Heidegger, you're not considering death, you're not understanding Heidegger. Death is everywhere, it's spitting all the time in everything. Here's what Heidegger has to say about inauthentic being towards death and the vulgar understanding of time, in being and time. Dasein knows fleeting time from its fleeting knowledge of its death. And the kind of talk that emphasizes time's passing away, the finite futurality of the temporality of Dasein is publicly reflected. And since even in the talk about time's passing away, death can remain covered over, time shows itself is passing away in itself. End of quote from Heidegger. Thus, it is the they's idle talk that helps the they to isolate from its finitude. It is the they's fleeing from death that finds expression in common phrases like time flies. A commentator called Piotr Hoffmann reads this just quoted lengthy passage as saying, and I think he's, um, as saying that Dasein knows its time is passing by because it is mortally finite. But I don't think that this is um, uh, I think this is a complete misunderstanding um, and it actually distorts, if I understand Hoffman correctly, I think it completely distorts Heidegger's project as uh, a certain uh, school, um, the, bluntly to say, put it just out there because it doesn't matter, uh, the Dreyfusians in general, um, very often Northern American Heidegger scholarship so-called, uh, I think have made it a life project to just completely distort uh, whatever is at stake. Maybe it, it probably is because of the language or maybe just uh, incapacity to think, but um, one should refrain perhaps from all too easy ways of reading any philosopher. And by the way, also to refrain from any commentator who doesn't know the language of the thinker they consider. If you're reading someone who uh, writes on Hegel and Heidegger and doesn't speak uh, German, then perhaps this is not uh, not uh, not really the right commentator. Commentare means to think with. How can you think with someone if you're not thinking in the language? It's impossible. So, Heidegger here provides the reason for how the ordinary understanding of time as passing has come about in the first place, and he also suggests that authentically being toward death could bring about an access to ecstatic time. Again, through death, through death, an access to time, which means an access to being. That is, authenticity, Eigentlichkeit, coming, in, coming into one's own, comes about by running forth towards death. Hoffman's reading, however, reinforces the vulgar understanding of time. The passage illustrates that Dasein always already knows of its death. This knowledge is fleeting as long as Dasein has not yet taken over its own death as its own most possibility, which is now in this situation in which we are, after the gods have flown necessary. So, 
What is reflected again in the idle talk about fleeting time is Dasein's inauthentic stance towards its mortality. Death is at once the hidden ground of the chatter about fleeting time, and death provides the way toward disclosing authentic primordial temporality. The vulgar understanding of time is fleeing, then, which Heidegger also suspects to be dominant in most, if not all, of philosophy, is a direct result of not having faced up to human mortality as the almost possibility. This in turn means that philosophy is inauthentic when it does not properly consider human mortality. For example, by taking death to be a passageway, as well, for example also transhumanism does. All the new Gnostics do. We shall, uh, so, um, so in, in the writings of the Fourfold, the Gefia Fourfold is a terrible translation actually, the, re the four regions, uh, of the world perhaps is, is better, the gathering of the four regions, Heidegger here begins to argue for the necessity of human being to become mortal being. The ontic talk in being in time of fleeting time, however, also positively indicates something, namely that time cannot be reversed. So, this is not to say that there isn't something about entstehen and vergehen, generation and corruption and time that passes us by that doesn't indicate formally something that's important and true, which is time is irreversible. Also ecstatic time is irreversible. How ever, why is this? Because of Dasein's ontological directedness towards the future. The passage furthermore stresses that Dasein's existential finite futurity is conditional on death. And this is why Dasein's fundamental toward structure is most radically apparent in what Heidegger calls being toward death. Death is the limit toward which Dasein exists, but that limit is, al is always already what deter always already, this is, we have to get into a bit of the a priori, um, and how far there is an a priori in Dasein. Uh, Dasein is its having been. Dasein is always already what it has been, extended out. It's not just a singular entity. Dasein is your uh, uh, extended being backwards through ancestry. Um, and this is, is what it has always already been, but as such, this a priori is still, uh, is not timeless, but is itself bound up with an open future that is open finitely open, so there, there is not an endless amount of possibilities. There is an horizon, let's say, of possibilities which are abundant and in excess of themselves. And they do spring from that which has been, but not in a deterministic way. There's a freedom unto death, as Heidegger says. So, Daniela uh, but Daniela Balega uh, Neu says that Heidegger understands death as limit in the Greek sense of peras, which is, quote from Daniela, a limit that gives something free in its limiting. So it's at the limit where something becomes free. Death is a limit, Daniela continues, that frees Dasein's own most being able to be, end of quote. That is to say, peras, as peras. Death belongs as this limit to Dasein rather than being its other. If Dasein falls for the they self, Dasein is precisely not free because Dasein, Dasein then isolates itself from its death. The future then has priority because it is from its finite futurity that Dasein derives its direction and therefore its meaning but always only in co-responding to that which has been and that which is generated as the good presence and the tension between the two in this stretching itself out between birth and death. What Heidegger means by future, however, is something else entirely than how we usually think of it. Here, quote from Heidegger, future does not mean a now that has not yet become actual and that some time will be, quote, end of quote. Authentic future hence is not a now that is not yet and that has to be actualized or will self-actualize. Instead, future is understood as the coming, die Kunft, in which Dasein comes toward itself in its own most being able to be. Heidegger here understands future closely to the origin of the German word Zukunft. Zukunft means that which comes towards, that which is coming towards. Das Zukommende also, das Zukommende has a, has a sense of gift, as a giving. 
a gifting. And a gift, of course, has to be accepted. A gift is not a positing. That, or giving is not positing. Uh, es ein Zukommen. Jemandem etwas zukommen lassen. Yeah, to, 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 send, to send something to someone. To deliver something to someone. But the question is, how will this someone respond to this sending? To this gift? It's all in the response. Already here in being in time. And this is, if you like, the trick when it comes to Gestell. This doesn't mean that all of a sudden technology disappears or the technological tools, but Gestell can be tricked with this. I'll leave it at that. Perhaps uh, some of you will, will begin to think. Some, sometimes, uh, maybe some person does. Sometimes not, so, but that's okay. When Dasein is authentically towards his finite futurity, Dasein comes towards itself as its own most. Sein können. Being able to be. That is to say, Dasein comes towards itself as authentic, resolute disclosing of its understanding of being. In that sense, the future constitutes the horizon against which the meaning of being is disclosed. For Dasein is, quote, futural in its being in general, in exactly this sense. The future, then, is not a not yet that is waiting to be actualized. Instead, future means that Dasein is fundamentally directed and oriented towards its own utmost limit, death, in such a way that Dasein can authentically and meaningfully disclose the world from that which has been. This is also how Heidegger understands meaning or Sinn im Deutschen. Yeah? Also, uh, uh, sense sometimes in English, of course. The Sinn is much more beautiful in German. Quote, strictly speaking, Sinn, meaning, sense, quote, signifies the upon which of the primary project of the understanding of being. End of quote. This is to say that, quote, meaning is an existential of Dasein, for Dasein Uh, sorry, the, sorry. This is to say that meaning is an existential for Dasein, not a property that is attached to beings. The world is meaningful for Dasein because Dasein is ecstatically directed towards its own most possibility, and thereby Dasein is able to disclose beings in their being. On the face of it, a talk of the priority. And by the way, so there is no being of time. Time does not have being. These dimensions of time that are equiprimordial and an interplay uh, they are, vi they are they're vibrating they're, sh they're, they're vibrating and waving uh, back and forth and they, they let something be tied and occur and open up but they are not strictly uh, uh, they, there's no time of being so the, the now here is not the, the, the being of, of time as it is for Hegel so here, on the face of it, I mentioned this before, um, the priority, and I'm looking for a couple of notes now uh, as well, uh, the priority of, sorry, uh, the future appears to be contradictory uh, to Heidegger's claim that a, quote, an a priori perfect characterizes the kind of being of Dasein itself. But let me briefly uh, clarify Heidegger's peculiar use of the a priori, the before structure, the for, and the always already. For Heidegger, these are not timeless notions. Instead, they point to the methodological necessity of presupposing a being, Dasein, that understands being. The before, the a priori, perfect of Dasein, that is to say that Dasein has always already existed, is not a transtemporal claim, and especially not a claim made in terms of linear time. This is an ecstatic, this is important, that, not, not linear time that somehow outside of it, as for Schelling's in the Freedom essay, somehow above it or below it, there's an a priori on, on uh, beyond this linear time flow. No, no, no. It's bound up in its, ecstac in its ecstasy, this a priori. Um, so that it always comes to itself too late, as it were. Always comes to itself as having been, and then has to take itself over as that which has been, as a memory of itself, pushing, however, towards the future. There's not just a sheer thrownness, an unfreedom. It must, the end give often in German, needs to lead to an Entwurf. Give often is having been thrown, 
but then you need to be not just project, as the English translation uh, suggests for Entwurf, but to throw out, to throw out and oneself beyond that which was, which what one was thrown into. Hmm? So, if not, then there is no future and the entire project of being in time would collapse if someone does not understand this and just remains uh, in, a, in a, you know, almost a, a, a mean kind of a, a, a way of just focusing on thrownness and doesn't, doesn't not see that uh, Entwurf and Gewolfen and German go together. Again, so much is lost in translation, which is why it is crucial that if you don't know German, but you want to understand Heidegger, you must go to sources where there is an active translation, an active thinking through the language and allowing for it to be weird and allowing for it to be unusual, uncommon, not what you thought. If you don't, don't read philosophy because you attack it. So leave. Okay? It's very important. Don't attack philosophy. Don't attack the great thinkers. Don't. If, you, if it doesn't speak to you, it's not their fault, it's yours. Then you must leave it behind. To be men, not destroyers, as Ezra Pound said. So, the before, the a priori perfect of Dasein, that is to say that Dasein has always already existed, is not a transtemporal claim, and especially not a claim made in terms of linear time. This is an ecstatic temporal claim. As soon as Dasein is, it is always already in the world with others, fallen for the world and the world's factical possibilities. Um, in this sense, an a priori is what structures Dasein. This is Dasein's having been and having been thrown, but it has, of course, to come out of it. As long as Dasein is, it exists according to its having been thrown. Moreover, being thrown means existentially to find oneself in such and such a way. Thus, Dasein is a tune on the ground of its having been, which is never of the past in the ordinary sense, but which constitutes, uh, which, sorry, but which continues to come towards Dasein and that is to say that Dasein's having been co-constitutes Dasein's future. The fact that Dasein is thrown means that there is a not in Dasein's being, because Dasein is who it is, for it is not everything else that Dasein could have been, for Dasein is not all its other possibilities. This not frees Dasein to who Dasein is. There is hence an immeasurable abundance of possible horizons in axis of themselves, limited and enabled, however, by Dasein's thrownness and Dasein's almost possibility death, for Dasein is, quote, always already, it's not yet as long as it is. So it doesn't remain on the level of just a mere thrownness, but it also opens up the Entwurf. Um, this always already is not outside of time, but takes place out of time, out of the X of the, in Greek X, uh, the out of, of Dasein's unitary axes that fundamentally structure Dasein and that let Dasein transcend and range over being, and this is where freedom occurs. Dasein's ecstasies push Dasein out of itself. I can, as Husserl's subject says, I can. And in the moment of the I can, I wake up to my freedom. Horizons of understanding thus are not given because Dasein is fundamentally determined by a not, quote, care, the being of Dasein, thus means, as thrown projection, entwurf, gewofener entwurf. This is completely lost in translation. Thrown projection is gewofener entwurf, thrown in and thrown out, thrown open. So it means as uh, thrown projection, give off an entwurf, thrown, throwing out, throwing oneself out of, being the null ground of nullity. Hence the not as having been has two functions. First, it delimits the contingency of the radical openness of the future. Second, it indicates that meaning is not previously given, but must always be wrested from what is coming towards us. Dasein's coming toward itself in its own most ability to be means that Dasein comes toward itself as the possibility not to be and thus impossibility of existence is precisely what determines and mediates Dasein's horizons of understanding. When Dasein, Heidegger, sorry, thus determines the meaning of existentiality to be the future, he argues that existence is meaningful 
because abundant but finite horizons of possibilities coming to us and for that which has been constitute existence. So um, there is a free swaying, a free vibration of the ecstasies. There is no being in this metaphysical sense. There is nothing that they have no being. This is kein Seinless. Yeah? These are threefold vibrations, threefold ex ex ecstasies. Yes, but also threefold uh, Entrückung. Right? Uh, 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 I wouldn't know what the word is. Uh, threefold pushed. There's a, there's a unity, an ecstatic unity of that which pushes itself out of um, that which has been into that which is to come. And this together constitutes that present moment that can be a kairos, a true Augenblick. Um, and they are the out of itself par excellence. Um, in here, in Heidegger, we can see that the thinking of the turn the turning of the tidings of being is here prepared and it is then a continuation of it. Um, the, I mean, the, the, the turning is a continuation of ecstatic time. There will then be even a, um, a fourth dimension of time. Um, and the, the first, so not just having been that which is and that which is to come, but uh, the, the the, the the distance that that comes closer or the the nearness that is moving away um, and the open that which generates the open is related relates itself to this dimension of nearness that moves away um, so in any Ereignung, there is Enteignung. In any coming into one's own, there is disowning also. So, um, and what Heidegger attempts here already in being and time, this is the most important perhaps um, aspect. And also this is why death, death, death is always of the essence because you cannot reify death. Substantiality. So this metaphysical way of thinking, reification, etc. Those are moving away. Um, those are crowded out in the thought of the ecstatic, of the ecstasies of time. Um, and we leave them behind here already. He's not quite there yet, but the thinking is preparing to be at the reine Geschehen, the pure or sheer betiding without ground. So, um, and this will come back as you will see in texts like Building, Dwelling, Thinking and uh, The Thing. And this is also why perhaps that um, vibration is so important, the musical of language and that movement for Heidegger is not mechanical. This is all prepared here. So you can see that um, Heidegger is pushing into the thought of withdrawal and at the same time coming into one's own in the ecstatic temporalities. And it will be um, with the word Ereignis, together with Aletheia and ecstatic temporality and death, that being can be thought most fully as this unfolding, folding into itself. So thank you very much indeed. And I'll say it again, if you'd like to study Heidegger with me, even more intensely and directly just follow the link down below and you'll see um, what i um, have to offer so thank you very much indeed see you soon